on Sisyphus, we have Oscar Coop. <laughs> Sisyphus by Albert Camus 
which was published in 1942, 1952 in English, details the link between Sisyphus and absurdism. His book asks the only question in philosophy that he considers and he's answering. Does the realization of the meaninglessness and absurdity of life necessarily require suicide? Now, what do we mean by the absurdity of life? Essentially, it was a phrase to describe the ongoing work and futile nature of life that accepts that death is the end no matter what we do or have done. Camus describes the, sister, describes the human condition. We live our lives supplying for tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow edges us further towards death. We can build anything we want in our lives, yet eventually it will end and we will cease our experience of the world. This then makes our lives meaningless. This is a realization of philosophy. It is the problem of life, and the answer to the question still remains debated. Camus uses Sisyphus to show his meaninglessness of life. He describes the thought of Sisyphus, his sorrow towards his meaningless, futile task of pushing a boulder up a hill over and over. There are some beautiful lines in his description of Sisyphus, which I do implore you to read. In many ways, the story of Sisyphus is a herald to our own lives. We live and work and eat and play and drink and sleep all for the eventual end of slumber. In an objective, wide world view, everything we do leaves nothing for it to end, for all of us. For Sisyphus, it is even worse. The end of his work never even occurs. The boulder always drops down to the bottom. This is what is defined as absurd in philosophy. The meaninglessness and pointlessness of life. Absurdism is the philosophical theory that the universe is meaningless and irrational. It states that all of it is, rather than just particular parts of it. States that actively trying to search and create meaning causes us to come into conflict with our meaningless world. Sisyphus is a symbol of the absurdity of life. Absurdism is a substrate of nihilism. Nihilism arose properly in the 18th century. It was written often by philosophers in the 19th century. It was a reaction to the decline of religion and the rise of secularism and scepticism. It, was a, it details an extreme moral outlook that the universe has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. It never will, nor ever has. The German philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, is often seen as the father of nihilism. He wrote extensively on the subject, and one of the focal points in the decline of Christianity in the West, where he argues that the Christian moral doctrine gave people intrinsic value and meaning. This is due to the relation to God and humans being designated as stewards of the earth, thus making humans special in the eyes of God. Furthermore, he writes that the afterlife was the main meaning and goal for humans to attend to. Christianity, he argues, was an attack against the despair of the lack of meaning in the world. He gives believers a meaning and justified reason for their existence. Stanley Rosen, another philosopher, added to Nietzsche's concept, stating that due to the loss of high metaphysical values that exist in the contrast to the base reality of the world or merely human ideas, it gives rise to the idea that all human ideas are therefore valueless. Essentially, Due to a lack of a high power, and nihilism wants to never be another god or gods, human ideas are valueless, as humans are not special in any respect, nor is the earth or our place in the universe. Nietzsche comments a line that is famous in philosophy. God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. This comment symbolizes the death of meaning from God, due to the rise of atheism in philosophy and the new battle between humans and meaning, without God's justifying existence. Nihilism took hold in the minds of those who explored the meaning of life within philosophy. This comment, sorry, <laughs> absurdism is the reaction to nihilism. Faces up to the lack of meaning and says, who cares? He tells you to live your life anyway. Because by ending your life prematurely from a lack of meaning, you succumb to the absurdity, the meaninglessness of life. Instead, we must strive to embrace life and its absurdity and live rebelling against the lack of meaning. In that, we gain meaning. As Camus states, happiness and the absurd are two sons of the same man. They are inseparable. This may seem counterintuitive. The absurd is meaninglessness. Then how can happiness be the sibling of meaninglessness? For absurdity, happiness is the acceptance that life is devoid of meaning. Instead of choosing to die, to end our lives prematurely, we accept we must live this contradiction between humanity's search and the meaning and the absurdity of life itself. Camus describes Sisyphus walking down towards his rock at the bottom of the hill. He knows his fate, tested by the gods, yet he still perseveres. Camus describes his happiness coming from this rebellion of the absurdity of life. Imagine him readying himself again to push a boulder up a hill, rock against cheap, 
Put mountain below, ready to push against and lift the rock. This rebellion to the gods is furthermore the absurdity of life. To keep going, no matter what, is beautifully lived like a movie. It drives out of this world the gods who would come into it with dissatisfaction and a preference for futile suffering. It makes of faith a human matter, which must be settled among men. Living our lives fully in the face of absurdity makes our faith a human matter. It rebels against this fate of life that gives us a question of meaning. No matter what, the obst what obstacles life may throw us, no matter what needs to be done, no matter how difficult it may be, the interpretation that Camus gives us is for one of perseverance. Even though Sisyphus is distant, he never stopped working to bring the boulder up the steep hill. In the presence of those who put him there, he still carries on. If Sisyphus, an old Greek guy from Corinth, in a prison beyond the world for the last 2,500 odd years, can carry on this endless and absurd task, then so can you, anyone else. A Greek mythological tale about hubris and deceiving the gods is a beautiful analogy for one of the biggest questions humans now face about their existence. Yet, it also brings inspiration and gives the teaching of perseverance and rebellion in the face of the absurdity of life. We as humans live and strive for meaning, even when there is none. But absurdism tells you that you do not need that inherent meaning. But instead, we still strive to keep going, to persevere through whatever may come. Sisyphus, by the tale of logic, is still pushing that boulder today. And as Camus states, the struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, we'll move on now to the next